calling to order the October 20, I mean, the August 23rd uh, Center of City Schools uh, board meeting. Um, this time is for public comment on closed session items. Uh, those items um, to uh, be commented on are item B1, public employee performance evaluations, B2, public employee discipline, dismissal and or release, and B3, conference with legal counsel on anticipated legal lit litigation, two cases. Are there any public comments? I don't see any cards here. If there are members of the public joining us on Zoom and would like to comment on the closed session agenda, please raise your hand. Vice President Medina, there are no hands raised. Okay, with no comments, uh, we will now uh, recess to closed session and we'll be back at about six o'clock. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you all for attending today's meeting of the Santa Rosa City School Board, opening this meeting Wednesday, August 23rd, 2023. Please rise for our territorial land acknowledgement and please stay standing through the Pledge of Allegiance. Leading us in our acknowledgement today is Superintendent Trinnell. Yes, thank you. We acknowledge the traditional territory and homelands of the Pomo people and Coast Miwok people whose connection to this land we remember and whose presence, past, present, and future, we respect. We appreciate the opportunity to live and learn on this land and commit to continuing to learn how to be better stewards of the land we inhabit. Let this acknowledgement serve as a reminder of our ongoing effort to support the indigenous members of our community. By offering this land acknowledgement, we affirm indigenous sovereignty and will work to hold Santa Rosa City Schools more accountable to the needs of American Indian and indigenous peoples. Thank you, Superintendent Turnell. Please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. We are moving on to item C3 of tonight's agenda. This is report of actions taken in closed session. We have two items to report. The first is that the board took action to recommend that an employee discipline hearing be held in an open hearing session with a hearing officer. This action was approved unanimously six to zero. The second is that the board approved to accept a settlement agreement for an employee. Item C4, items considered in closed session for action and open session. We have nothing to report on this item. Item C5, statements of abstention. Are there any statements of abstention this evening from board members? Seeing none, this brings us to item C6, adjustments to the agenda, board or superintendent. Are there any adjustments? Yes, thank you, board president Manieri. I would like to pull uh, consent item F9 for discussion. Thank you. I'd like to pull F4. F4. Thank you. Any other adjustments to the agenda this evening? Okay. And this brings us to item C7, special presentation, presentation and thank you to our community partner organizations. And I will hand it over to Superintendent Journal to lead us. Thank you, and I want to thank everyone for being here tonight. It's so exciting to see so many individuals with us. Um, we are doing this tonight, and it, this was sparked from a tragedy that happened in our district. And as such, there were organizations from our community who immediately responded to support our students, families, staff, and our community. And as we were building that very long list of individuals, it was also recognized that throughout our year and years, there are organizations who pour into our district, who support our students 
and staff and families on a regular basis. The individuals that are represented here tonight are just, are, it's not an exhaustive list. There are many entities who do this work with us and we are so proud and honored uh, because it is a demonstration of a village. It is a demonstration of the community that we serve that goes beyond the walls of a school or a district. And it is a demonstration of how our community comes together on a regular basis to support our students to their future endeavors. So what we're going to do, um, and I believe that certificates have already been handed out to a representative from organizations. I'm gonna call a person down uh, who I have a name here up front. I'm gonna ask the board to join me so that we can take turns just recognizing uh, each of these entities of which there is a certificate recognizing the overall organization. And we'll ask that the representative who has the certificates could please acknowledge those individuals. Um, if they are present, we will ask you to please introduce those individuals if they are present tonight. Does that work? Okay, let's do this. This is our first time doing it this way. I imagine that we're gonna continue doing this and it will grow into a really important um, opportunity every year for us to acknowledge our community partners. Come on down. Our first organization tonight is the Amorosa Academy, and we have Georgia Icomedes here this evening to receive the award for Amorosa. Deborah. Okay. And do you have others with you tonight? Um, I'm Deborah Sanders here on behalf of the Alternative Education Program, and we also have Susanna here with us, who is with our Foster Youth Services Program. Thank you. And then we have the Butte County Office of Education, uh, Isabel Quinones. And would you like to recognize individuals who are with you tonight? Well, thank you very much for all of this. Um, I want to um, acknowledge Emma Vigil, who's here in the audience tonight with us. Um, uh, thank you, Emma, for everything you do with migrant education here in Santa Rosa City Schools. She's a warrior. And for all my um, companions that weren't able to be here tonight and my colleagues, um, I also thank them. There's five other individuals from migrant education who work in Santa Rosa City Schools across, um, across this district. So thank you. Cap Sonoma and Head Start, Lisa Grocott. for having us. Um, unfortunately, Lisa Grocott is sick today. She um, is not able to be here. So my colleague Beatrice and I are here to um, thank everybody and to uh, appreciate our Head Start and Early Head Start teachers. Way to go, you guys. Career Technical Education Foundation of Sonoma County, Leslie Simmons. Thank you. <laughs> From our CHOPS Teen Club, Melissa Stewart. Your 
like to acknowledge uh, Angela Sanville, our development directors with us tonight, and all the rest of our team couldn't be here this evening because they're working with the teens at Chopstein Club till 7.30. <laughs> City Life Fellowship, Adam Peacock and Chris White. Just want to uh, thank the district for this acknowledgement and the strong partnership uh, Chris and I in particular have been able to um, engage with faith-based organizations across our city to reach out to our elementary schools, middle schools, and high schools. And so we're receiving this in lieu of, of the efforts of many congregations uh, and houses of worship across the community. Thank you. And City of Santa Rosa, Marikeisha Smith. City Manager, Marikeisha Smith. So I have an entire team here. Let me see, raise your hand. We have Chief John Cregan, have Assistant City Manager Darielle Dunstan. You gotta raise your hand, the sun is in my eyes. I've got Fire Chief uh, Westrope, Deputy Director of Recreation. Who do I have up there? Danielle, so I have Danielle Garduño. Who else is missing? You got to raise your hand. You got to shout it out. Jeff Tibbetts, Deputy Director of Recreation, Jeff Tibbetts. So this is a team. You know, I'm only um, the leader of the team, but the individuals that I just recognize do all the work. And we know that we're better together. And anything we can do to make this a better partnership, anything we can do for the school systems, we are here for you. Thank you. Anyone here from Community Matters? I know that Erica Vogel could not be here tonight. Please come on down. Other um, people. Hi, everybody. Um, Erica could not be here tonight, but I'm in her place. I'm Leanne. Uh, Senior Director at Community Matters. Um, I just want to thank uh, the City of Santa Rosa for um, honoring us with this award. And I'm just thrilled to be a part of the community and all of the youth empowerment programs that we've been able to deliver within our schools in the district and um, that we'll continue to do. Uh, my colleague Gwyneth Shears is here with me and all of my other colleagues probably left for work at this point, but um, uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Cross Point Christian Church, Mike Baker. Hi, um, limited seating, so didn't invite the church. I'm just here on their behalf, but uh, really appreciate, thank you for uh, uh, the recognition and um, just happy to be able to accept this on behalf of a, a church who loves the students and families and staff of Helen Lehman Elementary School. And then an entity under herself, Erica Bosky.
Nope. Uh, thank you all for having us here. There is a whole entire crew of people here. And my dad is here, Dominic Bosky, and my sister, Veronica Bosky, and my husband, Ryan, and all my babies, and my stepmom, Kathy. And um, also in support of a whole organization, Keystone Therapy and Training Services, who pulled together to let me be available to do the thing. So I really appreciate all of you. And thank you so much. Keystone Therapy and Training Services, Dominic Bosky. Thank you very much. You've been able to help us fulfill a very long time goal that I get to work with my daughter, and I don't know if it gets any better than that. Thank you. Right behind you. Land paths, Jessica Holloway. just like to recognize and acknowledge my, excuse me, coworker, Leslie Caballero, who's here with me today, who's taken on <laughs> directing our um, Santa Rosa City School summer camps. And she did a fabulous job this year connecting with families. And then of course, wanna give a shout out to our um, manager, Jamie Nakama, who's stepping away from Land Pass. We'll really miss her, but she's fostered an incredible relationship with the school district. And we're really excited to continue that through the years. LifeWorks of Sonoma County, Rebecca Roberts. Say thank you for honoring our work that we do. It's very important to my team that they're acknowledged at all the work that they do with our special needs and our mentally ill or mentally, you know, challenged children. And um, it's very important that we support our community in this way. And I know that this is gonna mean the world to them. Thank you all so much. Latino service providers, anybody, anybody? <laughs> In full transparency, I didn't know this was gonna happen. I didn't know we were on the list, but I'm, I'm really appreciative that we made it on the list. And um, I, I wish I would have known, I would have brought our, our team here. Um, so wherever they are, I know they're probably doing work with youth right now somewhere in Sonoma County. So I'm, I'm really grateful for them. And thank you, Anna, for, I, I was already emotional coming into this space, but I'm like over that edge. So thank you so much for, for this acknowledgement. Locien, Sonoma County, Herman G. I'm sorry, I, I, I don't have anything prepared, but before I introduce one of our newest board members and one of our other board members who is in the room today, I think we should give them some appreciation and love because of the work that they do. Um, it's not easy, it's not easy. And if you pay attention to what they have to go through, uh, it's absolutely like commendable, it's unbelievable. And I just wanna say thank you. And Lo Sien is very proud um, to be 
receiving this award just like everybody else, but this shows me our community and how amazing we are when we work together and especially when we're investing our time and energy and wisdom into our youth. So thank you so much. Um, we still have tickets available for Latino cultural experience on Friday. Um, so thank you. And we do have uh, Lindsay Bersina, who's an Elseon High School alumni, as well as Carrie Fugit here. Thank you. <laughs> Luther Burbank Center for the Arts, Tracy Sawyer. Hi, I'm Ashley. I'm Ashley Worley, Director of Education and Community Engagement at Luther Burbank Center for the Arts. Tracy Sawyer is here. She uh, refused to come down. So let's all turn around and recognize Tracy. Yeah. We are so thrilled to be here and we are humbled to be honored by you all. Um, LBC is a nonprofit. We are only able to do what we do serving over 50,000 students each year because of the community support. We invest over a million dollars in our students. We put back into the community to ensure we have the summer camps and the PDs for teachers and the in-school programs and the after-school programs. And you all are the reason we can make that possible. You all are the reason we are able to do that. So thank everyone in this room uh, for all you do for our students. NAACP Kirsten Land. Thank you all. Kirsten Lange, president of our NACP branch here in Santa Rosa, Sonoma County, joined by Danielle Garduño, our secretary, Chantel Reese, member at large, and Romis and Zenobia Reese, another set of members at large and active community members. We're super, we're super grateful and thankful for the partnership and opportunity to leverage our 21 board members to be on the ground and in support at any time and happy to be in community with you all and really honor and are appreciative of all you've endured to keep us a part of your community. So thank you. New Vintage Church, Pastor Aiden Mendoza. Hi, I'm Natalie Goodrich, and I'm the middle school pastor at New Vintage. This is Adon Mendoza. He's our community pastor. We're here with our spouses, Adam and Jen. And this award really goes to all of the people of New Vintage. We are just here to represent them today. Um, my hair is blue from Marshmallow Paintball on Sunday night with 300 students in Sonoma County because we are for our students at our church. We are for this city. We are for all of you on this board. We are for all of you in these organizations. We are for teachers. We are for administration. And none of this would be possible without every single one of you in this room and all of the teams that you represent. We love our kids. The most important thing is that, that we will do is pour into the next generation. We all know that, and it's why we all fight so hard to do it for them. Thank you for this award, but really, we don't deserve it. It's all of you and all of the people at New Vintage and all of the teams that you represent. So thank you. We are honored to be here and a part of the team that can partner with you to love on the students of Sonoma County. We appreciate you. Thank you. North Bay Children's Center, Paige Newman. Paige is currently up there. She's my area director. I'm Katie Peterson. I'm a site supervisor at our Steel Lane campus. 
um, I just want to say thank you for the recognition um, for allowing us to be on our in the center as a city school district the last few years and our partnership with center as a city schools. We also have our CFO Diane Dubois up there as well as our CEO Susan Gilmore and another area director uh, Elizabeth Mendoza. So we just want to say thank you and we appreciate the continued support. North Bay organizing project, Manny Morales. Okay, we'll, we'll touch base with Manny. North Coast Builders Exchange, Lisa Whitkey Schaffner. Hi, not Lisa Whitkey Schaffner. I have Lisa Whitkey Schaffner with us. She is our president and CEO of the uh, North Coast Builders Exchange. And my name is Nicolette Weinsbeg. I'm the director of workforce development and education. And we're truly honored to um, be recognized this evening. Um, our North Bay Construction Corps is a career, a construction career uh, exploration and skills building program for high school seniors in their last semester of high school. And we couldn't do this without the college and career counselors, the principals, the district, Omarosa, um, Sonoma County Office of Education. It's our industry partners. It's a huge, huge partnership. Um, and it's really showing that our community can come together to um, lift up these students to help them find a path to workforce or to higher education um, and help to bring them back to our community and have a vibrant workforce. So thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Church of the Roses, Reverend Dr. Cindy Alloway. So at the Church of the Roses, we are just so grateful for the partnership with the Montgomery High School students. And this is about our 20th year of having the free hot breakfast program that we provide every morning for them of the school year. But we also love just opening up our church for the concerts they need to put on that they need an extra venue for or for the AP testing or for special seminars that they want to have a special place to, to have the students come to. So we love the students at Montgomery High School and we're so grateful that over about 20 years, we've been able to put on this breakfast program and more and more kids are coming every day. So I'm here with Chris Rhodes, who's been a part of the breakfast program for 20 years. <laughs> and Norm Smith is here, and he's the um, chair of the Church and World Committee that um, he just retired from that. And we have a new one, Rhonda Darrow, who's the chair of the Church and World Committee, who oversees the breakfast. So we're very thankful for you and for all you do. Raices Collective, Isabel Lopez. We'll make sure Isabel gets this award. Rotary Club of Santa Rosa and Gospi. I'm Ann Gosby. I'm the president of the Rotary Club of Santa Rosa, and it is our distinct pleasure to work with the schools here in Santa Rosa. We um, have had the pleasure of doing many, many things. We bring in youth exchange students from around the world every year, uh, provide dictionaries to the students. One of our newer um, endeavors is working with Veterans for Peace, who you'll hear from also, um, in providing peace polls to the schools. We are always looking out for other ways that we can Support the school, support our students, and thank you very, very much. Safe Roots to School, Christina Ponza.
Thank you so much, uh, San Jose City School Board. Um, I'm just so grateful for this award. Um, although I don't have any staff with me today, I do want to acknowledge my amazing staff of educators and site coordinators who help make kids um, safer in walking and bicycling to school. Um, and I especially want to thank our amazing champions, school principals, teachers, and parents at the schools that we work with who implement Safe Routes to School encouragement programs, who help support our education programs, who really help spread the word about safety. Um, and um, I also want to make sure everyone is aware there's an opportunity to get involved as a parent. We have a Safe Routes to School Santa Rosa Task Force that has been formed. Our first meeting is tomorrow. You can stay up to date on that through our website. And it's a place to collaborate and share your concerns and help make our streets safer for all, whether you're walking, bicycling, driving, carpooling, taking the bus, we want all of that to be safer for everybody. Thank you so much. We're almost done. Sandals Church, Santa Rosa, Pastor Jenkins. I just want to take a moment to uh, acknowledge my wife, Kelly, who is also here and is also on staff with me at the church. But as others have said, this is a, a church-wide award. And so we are simply accepting that for them. And I want to thank you just for the opportunity to encourage and support and just love on our faculty, staff, and students. Santa Rosa Community Health, Anne-Marie Brown. Buenas tardes, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, my name is Judith Correa, I'm not Anne-Marie Brown. Anne-Marie Brown is our amazing Senior Director of Communications and Development and is sitting up there and is uh, an amazing part of our team and who makes this partnership with Santa Rosa City Schools and specifically LC Allen High School, um, where we have one of our school-based health centers um, and serve one in four of our, uh, one in four Santa Rosans. Uh, not, not at the LC Allen High School, but uh, in all of our health centers. Uh, and I'm just so grateful to be here with Anne-Marie and with Luisa Ramirez, uh, the Director of Operations who oversees uh, our school-based health center and a lot of our special populations. And Teresita Madrigal, who's here representing our operations team with uh, behavioral health and mental health. Uh, we're very proud to receive this and I look forward to many more years of partnership with you. Thank you. Santa Rosa Fire Department, Chief Westrup and Captain Reichert. Reichert. I just want to say thank you on behalf of the 157 members of the Santa Rosa Fire Department. Uh, Captain Rickard here is with us tonight because she is the uh, team lead for our DEIB uh, community outreach campaign. So she's really involved in the schools uh, more than anybody else and has been working with the superintendent's office. So thank you all very much. And do we have a representative from Santa Rosa Junior College? No. Oh, yes. Hello, my name is Oscar, but you can call me Oscar. Uh, I'm just gonna say a little thing. Uh, when I get um, thank, thanks for something I do as RJC, I use a quote from the movie, The, uh, uh, the Bicentennial Man, which is, uh, one is glad to be of service. And that phrase encapsulates what we do as RJC, which is 
serve the community. So on behalf of SRJC, uh, we are glad to be of service. Thank you. Santa Rosa Police Department, Dr. Chief Cregan. Dr. Chief Cregan. I was reading one line below. I just made you a doctor. <laughs> but thanks so much. And the Santa Rosa Police Department is proud to be such a strong partner with our Santa Rosa schools. And really I want to thank Officer Luigi Valencia, who really stepped up and is one of the most incredible officers in our team and worked at the Monte campus. And he's really someone like we're really proud of at the Santa Rosa Police Department. But thanks everyone for your support. Schools Plus, Jason Lee, Ashley Haskins, and Christine, it's either Snyder or Cinder. Snyder, okay. Okay, well, I want to recognize Jason Lee and Christine Snyder. That's what I was going to say. Where's Jason? Up there. All right, thank you. So Schools Plus um, is a local nonprofit that has raised money for our middle school and high school sports and arts programs. We support all five um, middle schools and all five of our high schools. So um, we wanna thank you for recognizing us for that work that we've done ever since um, 1990. And um, it's a really cool collection of people tonight. I've been hearing so, so many people from the community all to be in one place in one night. So thank you for doing this very much. Side by side youth, Dr. Christine Garcia. Thank you so much. It's so nice to see everybody. And uh, we are side by side. I am the CEO of Side by Side. And with me here should be Denise Mendoza and Vernon Pope Banks, who are in the schools day in, day out. And that's why they're not here, is they're working. Uh, we provide counseling services, and we have a 10-week program for at-risk youth in the Santa Rosa schools. It's been a wonderful partnership, and we're so committed to Sonoma County in Santa Rosa. Thank you, everybody. Sonoma County Office of Education, Superintendent, Dr. Amy Carter. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the opportunity. I have uh, two of my deputies here with me tonight, Deputy uh, John Laughlin and Greg Medici. Uh, my third deputy, Diane Kitamura, sends her love. Uh, I have three assistant superintendents also with me, Mandy Corbin, uh, Louis Gansler, and Jason Lee. Uh, but really, this, this represents the 450 individuals who work at the Sonoma County Office of Education who are so dedicated to young people, uh, and we really appreciate this honor. This kind of collaboration and community partnerships is, is the ideal for us in education. We can't do it alone. Uh, and it's to the credit of this school board and to Superintendent Trinnell that, that these kind of partnerships happen in behalf of children. Do we have a representative from Sonoma State University here? Yay, Dr. Alamio. Hi, my name is Laura Lamillo. I'm the Dean of the School of Education at Sonoma State. And I have here the Director of um, SEIE, Dr. Karen Schneider, faculty, Dr. Sarah Rapp. We are um, very honored to be um, recognized today because of our work really in working on building quality, racially diverse teachers. Our teacher residencies, I think, are really a highlight in our school. We have programs like the Excel program that take 
that builds programs for youth in schools. And then of course we have our ed leadership program where we're really trying to um, build educators and ed leaders that reflect the children. I'm also a proud parent of children in Santa Rosa, Santa Rosa City Schools. So this is very personal for me. Um, I just want to say, if you want to learn more about um, the programs in, um, in the School of Educa Education, please visit our website. And we're very happy to, um, to work with all of these partners here. Thank you. SOS Community Counseling, Becky Ennis. Thank you very much for the acknowledgement for SOS Community Counseling. My name is Becky Ennis. I very much invited staff because they're the ones that do the work. Uh, 30 therapists, I'm here to represent them. I am simply the one that signs the papers. Uh, and so thank you all very much for this opportunity. The Imaginatists, Amy Pinto. The Imaginists. Sorry, I don't have my glasses on. strangely nervous. Um, thank you. This means a lot to us to be uh, recognized and also to be here with all of you tonight. Um, I want to thank my co-directors, Brent Lindsay, who's right there, and Stephen Patterson, and Yoreni Fuentes, who could not be here tonight. Um, yeah, I, we, arts equity and um, arts education for all of our children is something the Imaginists are very passionate about. Uh, since 2009, we've been partnering with schools in Santa Rosa City School District to bring theater to uh, kids and to bring kids to our theater. Um, so a shout out to all the arts organizations doing that in our county. Um, arts goes a long way to help kids in so many social emotional learning, especially after the pandemic. Um, I really want to thank our partner schools, uh, teachers, administrators, principals, who uh, it wouldn't happen if we didn't have those relationships. Um, and and that goes to all of you. So thank you so much, and we're honored. Veterans for Peace, Terrence Monroe McNeil. President Monyari, uh, Superintendent Turnell, thank you. Veterans for Peace, the local chapter with our pals in the Rotary and Qantas have put 25 of these in the Santa Rosa schools right around here. The nearest ones would be Luther Burbank over there, there and the Santa Rosa French American Charter School over there. We are now branching out into Geyserville, into Petaluma, Harmony, way out in Occidental, and Cardinal Newman. And with uh, Superintendent Trinell, it's really worked out wonderfully. We have 162 languages, including POMO, including American Sign Language. This is the one from my vegetable garden from this afternoon. So it has Swedish, Portuguese, uh, La Lengua de Espanol, and, uh, and English, of course. So this is a project. And I think our last one is going to be Gualala, way up in the corner of the county. So it's a big project for our local veterans group, which is, as the motto, uh, honor the dead, heal the sick, and stop the wars. Thank you. Thank you. Violence Prevention Partnership, Danielle Garduño.
Thank you so much, Santa Rosa City Schools. Uh, Danielle Garduño, Program Manager for the Violence Prevention Partnership. I want to acknowledge our team, starting with Mark Keisha Smith, our City Manager, Assistant City Manager, Dariel Dunstan, Deputy Director of Recreation, Jeff Tibbetts, uh, Chief Cregan, um, and also my amazing team, uh, Gustavo Mendoza, Community Outreach Specialist who couldn't be here with us this evening, Miles Bergen, Community Outreach Specialist, and Madeline Brown, our interim choice analyst and office queen extraordinaire. And also a big shout out to all of our community partners. We are a partnership. We couldn't do this work without you. So thank you so much. And I'm really bummed out that Herman left because I'm also an Elsie Allen uh, alum, class of 1999. So <laughs> thank you. West County Transportation Agency, Chad Barksdale. Uh, I want to say I appreciate the opportunity to be a community partner, to be recognized as a, a, not just a um, transportation agency, but a community partner, because that's the way we think we are. And as I sit here and I listen to all the others being recognized, I say, I know them. I know them. I know them. We do work for them. We transport kids for them. We support that program and that program. And so it's, it's an testament that it does take a village. And um, I appreciate our opportunity be a part of that village um, and um, on behalf of our more than 150 employees supporting the schools and the, and the county, I'll accept this. Um, and just as uh, we have a small uh, portion of employees that came with us uh, from a wide range, um, and I'll go through each one of them uh, starting at the top, we have our fleet and facilities manager, Kevin Rickard. Um, we have our uh, human resource specialist, Amanda O'Connor, and we even have our bus pass coordinator and our office manager, um, Catherine Lori Morris is a, as a supervisor, Katie Noguchi is a supervisor, Carrie Cox, who manages all the routing and scheduling, the, the, and we have our payroll supervisor, Christy, and our business manager, Diane Hughes. So thank you very much. We have one more, and we'll be getting them a plaque later, but Boys and Girls Club, Nicole Saunders and Rachel Kahn. Good evening, I'm Nicole Saunders. I am one of the Youth Impact Vice Presidents for Boys and Girls Club Sonoma Marin. And um, I'm here with Rachel Cohn, who is one of our area directors. Um, and we're accepting this on behalf of our CEO, Jennifer Weiss, and our entire Boys and Girls Club team. Uh, thank you so much for this. We are super grateful to have um, Santa Rosa City Schools as one of our partnering districts and that we can walk um, alongside each other to do whatever it takes for kids. Wow, look at the room. What an amazing group of people. Thank you so much for all that you do and will be doing with us for future generations. Have a wonderful evening. You don't need to stay for the whole meeting, so it's okay. We'll take a quick break if you don't mind, President Manieri. Thank you so much.
Tenemos el primero o el segundo. So there, there is some sound, a little bit of sound. Okay, we are going to continue with this evening's meeting. We are on item C8, public comment on non-agenda items. This is an opportunity for members of the public to speak to the board on non-agenda items only. Speakers are limited to two minutes each. During public comments, we kindly ask that you maintain a respectful and civil tone during your comments, keeping in mind that differing opinions are welcome. Personal attacks, offensive language, or disruptive behavior will not be tolerated. Please be aware that persistent disruptions may result in a warning, and if necessary, further action may be taken as outlined in our policy guidelines. Thank you for your cooperation in creating a constructive and inclusive meeting. Um, at this time, I have one blue card from Mr. Adrian Juarez. And this is the only blue card I have. Um, afterwards, we will move on to our remote attendees. I'm sorry to interrupt. And is it two minutes, President Manier? Yes, two minutes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, primeramente, mi nombre es Adrián Juárez. Tengo dos niños y una niña estudiando en el Distrito de Santa Rosa, uno en Montgomery, mi niña en Slater y mi niño en French America Charter School. Mr. Juarez comes to us. Uh, with, he has got a number of children in our schools, among uh, which are Surfax, uh, Slater, and también Montgomery, ¿verdad? Montgomery, and you also have a graduate. Yes. Mm -hmm. Y también un graduado de Santa Rosa, sorry. <laughs> also a graduate of Santa Rosa City Schools. Uh, primeramente, tengo dos peticiones el día de hoy. He sido presidente del comité de DILAC por cuatro años y presidente de ILAC en diferentes escuelas del distrito. El día de hoy me gustaría hacer una petición que en esta noche de regreso a clases próximamente, directores de las escuelas del distrito compartieran información del comité de ILAC a nuestros padres que tenemos hijos aprendices del inglés. Que hubiera mesas de información con personal para proporcionarles a los padres Espero nos ayuden con esta petición, ya que el año pasado no se compartió información precisa en la escuela Montgomery. Segunda y por último, si pudieran brindarnos información, cómo está trabajando el Comité de Seguridad 
que se formó a raíz del incidente que pasó en la escuela Montgomery, ya que en cuatro días han pasado peleas, en solamente cuatro días, en específico en la escuela Montgomery. Uh, esperamos información sobre este tema uh, en un futuro no muy lejano. Gracias. Uh, first of all, I have two requests this evening. I have been on DLAC. I've been president of DLAC for four years and DLAC president of a number of different schools in the district. Today, I'd like to make a request with respect to the upcoming back to school night. I'd like for the principals of the schools to share information about the ELAC committee to parents of English learners students and for them to have like tables with information, staff by personnel to give them this information for these parents. I hope you can assist us with this request. Since last year, they didn't give very precise information about uh, ELAC in particular at Montgomery High School's um, back to school night. Secondly, and lastly, please uh, give us an update on the work of the safety committee and what they're doing on the committee. This was formed as a result of the incident that happened in Montgomery. Um, and the reason for his request was because in the last four days, they've already had fights erupting at, at Montgomery already and we're just four days in. And he looks forward to hearing from you in the future. Thank you very much. Um, eso es todo por el momento. Um, esperemos trabajar juntos. Um, como lo vuelvo a repetir, he sido presidente en este distrito y me gusta colaborar, trabajar y sobre todo que se ejerzan los derechos de nuestros estudiantes, ¿verdad? Uh, yo creo que hay muchos padres que tienen pena, miedo de venir a expresar uh, sus inquietudes. Uh, aquí voy a estar colaborando con ustedes. Estoy abierto para trabajar con ustedes. Added a little bit here at the end. Uh, that was all for the moment he said, but he looks forward to working uh, together. Uh, he wants to continue this partnership. He's not uh, absolutely certain he'll be continuing as president, but he wants to make sure that the rights of the families and the students are, are, are defended and that he's concerned that some people are afraid or maybe uh, unwilling to share their concerns or um, feelings about the situations they find there. But in any case, he looks forward to a continued uh, collaboration and he is here to help. Gracias. Gracias, Senor Juarez. Thank you. We will move on to remote attendees. Thank you, President Manieri. There's members of the public joining us on Zoom and would like to comment on our non-agenda item. Please raise your hand at this time. As a reminder, we have a two minute time limit. Our first speaker is Adina Flores. Good evening, board and superintendent. For the stakeholders who aren't aware, I'm the former executive assistant to the board and superintendent sitting at the dais. I was illegally forced out as a protected whistleblower and am now an investigative journalist at the California Globe. I did see a settlement agreement was approved by the board today. Hopefully that's mine. I do have some inquiries I'd like to address. Last May 2022, Sonoma County Equity Officer and Santa Rosa City Schools Trustee De La Cruz uh, recommended to the Board of Supervisors ARPA funding in the amount of $3 million to be partially attributed to Rice's Collective, a separate allocation of $570,000 as well. This is listed on her Form 700. Ms. Isabel Lopez of Rice's Collective, the Executive Director, shares a mortgage with Ms. De La Cruz and is also Ms. Manieri's aunt. That is a tremendous conflict of interest and a violation of Gov Code 1090 under the Political Reform Act. Uh, therefore, it entitles you to a fine and imprisonment as well. So I would like clarification as to why you find that equity is giving yourself our tax dollars. I did find for court records, there was a Miss Isabel Lopez arrested last year, or my apologies, I believe it was last year for a DUI for actually crashing into a police officer. Um, and I did hear from the constituents that Ms. Lopez of Rice's Collective was arrested for this very reason. So I'd like to confirm if those two individuals happen to be the same person. I did send you an email right before this meeting for a request for comment. And then all of a sudden there was a settlement agreement approved. Um, I'd like to know if we are acknowledging the money washing club, Mr. Herman Hernandez, 
acknowledged this evening is currently under investigation with the Fair Political Practices Commission. Uh, Ms. Kristen Lange of the NAACP, they don't legally exist within the state of California. She did send you an email saying I was escorted out of Juneteenth last year. I sent you video showing I was on the twerk you later in Oakland and in Vallejo as well. So you're fully. Thank you, Ms. Flores. The time was up. Our next speaker is Margaret Boone. Good evening, board. Um, last school year in late February, a group of our students at Montgomery brought to this board videos and pictures of the atrocious state of our campus at Montgomery. We had bathrooms that were virtually unusable, broken cracked cement that had already led to multiple injuries, two of those injuries of non-ambulatory students, rotting, molding, expired portables with moss growing up the sides of them, exposed wires, sewage flooding classrooms, failing HVAC, and so much more. Since that time, we have had student bathrooms remodeled, a remodeling job that ran late, so we had to open school with only one boy's bathroom and one girl's bathroom, a partial fix of the damaged sewer line that will need weekly monitoring, and one patch of pavement repaired. In a few months, you'll be discussing next steps for Montgomery. I wanted to speak tonight to let you know how vitally important it is that there be significant investment at Montgomery. You just had to move the district office staff to a temporary office because their buildings and portables were so run down. I would argue Montgomery is equally bad and we have 1600 children there. I know you came out and toured Montgomery, but it's so bad, worse than you could see even in a detailed tour. I've been there 12 years and I generally don't even see how dilapidated it is. But when I look around with a critical eye, so much of it, particularly the 60s, the bungalows, the portables, are beyond repair. They're rotting, moldy, and have moss growing up the sides. It's insane we have people in these buildings. And in the older buildings, the cracked floors, windows with rotting frames, possible, possible asbestos, it's unlivable. Our gyms are hot and stinky. Our art rooms are freezing in the winter and sweltering in the spring and fall. We've had someone out fixing the AC yesterday and today, and multiple ACs went out, including the entire art wing. Um, please, Begin to think about how we can fix anything at Montgomery before the whole place falls down. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. Okay. Our next speaker is Shelby Pryor. Good evening, board. Man, oh, happy day in the words of Miss Laura Hill. Miss Dela Cruz and Miss Manieri. Now, you wear them masks so that people can't see the reaction on your weak faces when we bring facts to the public, like Raisa's Collective went from making $30,000 a year to $300,000 a year once Miss De La Cruz all of a sudden showed up in the picture. Let's talk about the fact who bailed Miss Lopez out of jail. We can find those public records and we're searching. This is a great thing to know that you guys partnership with felons People who, how do you, y'all claim to not like the police. How stupid do you have to be to run into one? Oh, wait, you were drunk. That's right. You were a hazard to the community. I could have been in the street with my daughter and your drunk self could have hit me and my child killing one of us or both of us. Yeah, keep breathing deep and heavy. I hope you take that oxygen in so it gets to your brain so you understand the felonies you're facing. The things that they're going to lock you up for, Ms. De La Cruz. I hope you go through what half of us incarcerated and underprivileged, underclass people have to go through on a regular basis when you see your kids stripped from you because you and your husband are stealing from the community. And they get to grow up in a facility just like the rest of us underprivileged kids. Keep playing stupid games and you win stupid prizes. We're trying to get transparency and honesty given to your own group collective is not equity. You're helping the people next to you. You're not helping the group, just your people. Your husband supposedly brings in two, three thousand dollars a year. Girl, I might not read at the level you do, but I do math way better than you do. Thank you. Our next speaker is Thor McLaughlin. Good evening, school board. My name is Thor McLaughlin and I have children enrolled at Hidden Valley Elementary. I actually recently moved here from Oakland. And in Oakland, the school district and the elementary schools there is virtually guarantee spots in aftercare for the children enrolled at elementary schools. And they bring in multiple outside organizations to do so. 
my experience at Hidden Valley has been really the exact opposite and much worse. Upon enrolling my kids, I learned that they would be put on a wait list um, for aftercare, which was fine. And I understood that. But after I dug deeper, I understood that the wait list actually would take years to get off of and that many parents have been waiting three or four years before ever being provided a spot. Given I was new to the school, I began asking other parents about their experience with the aftercare program at Hidden Valley. I heard comments like aftercare is a disaster. It's been completely mismanaged. Aftercare has been run into the ground. I also learned that my children were inexplicably placed higher on the wait list than other uh, children who had been waiting years on that same wait list. It, there was no explanation for this. Like me, most parents I spoke to were willing to pay much more for the aftercare for the aftercare that was provided. So this can't just be a money issue. It seems to be that it's been mismanaged for many, many years. I would like to request that the school board investigate the aftercare situation at Hidden Valley Elementary School and understand what's going on with both the wait list, why they've been unable to bring in outside organizations to expand the aftercare options or to expand the aftercare available through the school. This problem really is untenable for working parents, which I think makes up most of parents in the modern day. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. McLaughlin. President Manieri, there are no more hands raised. Thank you. Um, this brings us to item D1. This evening, California School Employee Association, Santa Rosa 75 report, CSEA President Mary Lehman. There she is, is no present. CSEA report tonight. Thank you. This brings us to item D2, Santa Rosa Teachers Association. I will hand it over to SRTA President Catherine Howell. Good evening, President Manieri, Superintendent Trinnell, members of the board and the community listening. My name is Katherine Howell, and I am the president of the Santa Rosa Teachers Association, representing about 875 teachers in the city of Santa Rosa. Uh, <clears throat> I asked a few teachers today how they're feeling here uh, in this first full week of school, and I got lots of uh, really good responses. They're happy, they're energized, they're ready. Uh, they're, you know, they know it's hard work, but they're ready for it and they're really enjoying their students and they're enjoying being back at school, which is great. Um, I want to say thank you tonight for the resolutions that are on the agenda, uh, the suicide prevention and attendance awareness. We know that these resolutions and these actions associated with them uh, tie right into student wellness. And um, we know that student wellness and good attendance at school leads to more student success and improved student safety, which makes all of us uh, at our sites more successful and safer, which is definitely a goal. But I do wanna focus on something that has to do also with student wellness. I'd like to talk to the board about a standardized test that our secondary teachers are being asked to administer in math and English. This test is called MAP, M-A-P. I'm sure it's an acronym for something, but I don't know what. And, um, but I do know that our English and math teachers are being asked to administer this test three times a year. It can take up to three class days for each time they are administering this test. And if you do the math real quick, you can see that that could be nine days of instruction or 10% of our school year spent on this one standardized test rather than connecting with our students and uh, actually teaching them new information. The district has said that the stated purpose of this test is to have a common shared assessment across the secondary seven through 12 grade levels which is a great goal, and we are not arguing that that's a good goal. However, this district said that this test will help teachers understand where their students are and help teachers adjust instruction to better help students meet learning outcomes. Overwhelmingly, teachers say that this test does not do that. It does not give them the data they need. Uh, it limits accessibility to only English and math teachers, meaning any sort of campus-wide literacy attempt is unable, those other teachers just don't have access to the data. Um, and it hasn't helped them adjust their teaching. 
The district has said another purpose of this test is to allow site administrators to set site goals and areas of focus. Again, there's no evidence that this has happened at any of our school sites. And finally, it says that this test will help district administrators evaluate the quality of programs and build summative understandings of student learning trends. We haven't seen any evidence of this happening either um, outside of saying that, oh, well, obviously teachers need some more professional development. We're asking that these tests be reevaluated before you continue to pay large amounts of money to contract for this standardized test. There are free versions available, the interim assessments from the CAASPP, which would not only give us this data, but actually get kids used to what the CAS test looks like and get them ready for the end of the year test. And these assessments take a lot less time than the MAP test. And uh, that is what the teachers are arguing that these tests, these MAP tests don't help. And in fact, they hurt the kids. If we care about student mental health as expressed in our resolutions today, then the decision to take the decision to force students to take these tests should be reconsidered. Thank you. Thank you, President Howell. Item D3 is a superintendent report. Thank you, President Manieri, members of the board, those who are with us in person and online. Here I go. Today marks day six of the school year. We only have 174 more days of opportunity to positively support our students. We are starting the school year strong, as you've heard some evidence, spending these first days of school building and reinforcing relationships with students, staff, and families. We have back to school nights coming up. On September 7th is our elementary back to school night. On September 14th is for our middle schools, and on September 21st is for our high schools. And I do want to make a comment. The safety and well being of our students, staff, and families is of our utmost importance. And that includes our board members. Any threats? Any actions that put our district, our staff, our students, our families in a negative light is an attack on this district. We are tired of not being seen in a good light. Our students, staff, and families deserve better. If you are not for this district, you have no business being involved with us in any way. Now is the time for you to decide whether you're going to make an investment in a positive way in this district or go somewhere else. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Superintendent Chernow. Next is board president report. And I think I wanna take my time to echo everything that Superintendent Turnell just said. And, and thank you for your uh, courage in, in saying that out loud. Superintendent Turnell, I think you just said a lot of what many of us um, wish we would have said a lot sooner. So thank you. Um, I just, I have to maybe, um, acknowledge that I came into this space knowing that we were going to have a really beautiful celebration of community of, um, of folks that have invested so much time and dedication and energy and love into our district and into our um, students. And, um, and I was really, uh, and I continue to be really full of that, of that energy. Um, but um, we 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 face a really difficult, um, and we've talked about this before on this board that we face a really difficult. We navigate a really difficult space as as board members, each and every one of us in our respective roles. Some of us are educators on this board, some of us are parents, um, some of us are advocates, some of us are community leaders, and um, our roles intersect with this district and this work in in really personal ways. Um, 
And I think that that's beautiful. And I think that that is something to be celebrated. And I think it's an asset that every single one of our board members bring to this district and to this board. Um, and I think it's in our power to, um, to reclaim that because it has been, um, it has been talked about in a really negative light um, by, by a lot of people and, and even institutions in our community. So it's a long-winded way of saying thank you, Anna, for your words and to my fellow board members that, um, that hate will, will, not, will not be tolerated in, in, every, in every way and in every form and that violence will not be tolerated. Um, and that I personally am committed, com committed to, to doing better and to, um, to serving you all better. Thank you. Item D5, our board member reports. If there are any board members who have anything to say this evening. Director De La Cruz. Um, thank you so much, Superintendent Chanel and President Manieri for your comments. I love that day six, um, both of my kids wake up with joy to go to school at Santa Rosa City Schools. And so I'm grateful to all of you and to our larger community for making that so. Um, thank you for providing a space where kids feel loved and excited to learn. Um, and I'm just grateful for being in community with you here to make sure that all of our kids feel like that. Um, I was part of a beautiful ceremony on Saturday. Thank you to Grupo Chanto, which is a beautiful Danza Azteca community um, that honored educators in Santa Rosa City Schools um, for their work in lifting up kids in our community and for continuing to provide safe spaces for healing, um, safe spaces for being. <laughs> um, and so I just wanna give a special abrazo to Ms. Zavala, um, who I got to share a really warm hug with in, um, in beautiful ceremony for, in gratitude for what she and other educators um, have done for our kids in our district. So thank you, Omar and Grupo Chantor, and thank you to Ms. Zavala. Thank you. Other board member reports this evening, Director Delatori. Good evening. Uh, I just wanted to share a really fun experience that I had to begin the school year with the community. Um, we have 23 campuses that uh, we support with Santa Rosa City Schools and dropping my junior off for his first day of school last Wednesday and being on site and seeing the community and seeing the faces of the students and the parents and the staff, um, a little light bulb went off with, what if I had this opportunity for each campus just to say hello, just to check in, just to welcome the community back. Um, that turned into the opportunity of visiting three campuses last Wednesday. Uh, I was able to visit one more last Thursday. Uh, I may or may not have enticed my wife with a lunch on Friday is she be willing to drive around some campuses with me Friday afternoon? And when it was all said and done, we had visited eight more campuses Friday afternoon. Um, and then this week, between Monday and Tuesday, we were able to visit, I was able to visit eight more campuses on Monday and the last three on Tuesday. So I stepped foot and greeted office managers and some principals on all 23 campuses. Um, attitudes were upbeat a lot of positive energy, a lot of positive stories. Many campuses have more attendance than was expecting with some campuses expecting more students. Um, and it was just a really great opportunity to put a name to the face and remind the community who I am and that I'm reachable and attainable. And I wanna be a part of these conversations so that our teachers, our support staff, um, our administrators have the support they need to enrich the opportunities for our students. Bottom line is we all need to do better. And if we can do better today than we did yesterday, then we'll have an opportunity better tomorrow than we were today. Um, so it was a really fun experience. I appreciate the schools welcoming me and introducing me to their sites. And I look forward to spending more time on the campuses throughout the year uh, so that we continue to work collectively as a district has separate sites and with the community that we honor in this room tonight to provide the best opportunities possible uh, for our collective children. 
Thank you, Director Delatori. Other board member reports, Director Medina. Thank you, President Manieri. Uh, first off, I wanted to, uh, again, thank uh, Superintendent Trinnell for organizing the thank you at the beginning um, to our community partner organizations. I thought that was awesome and beautiful and that it reflected how many people are involved in trying to do by, right by our youth. Um, there's still so many out there that, that weren't able to be present, but I think I want to emphasize that we've just started the school year and we still have so much work to do. We still need so much more help. We have a lot of teacher positions open, a lot of staff positions open, um, classified, restorative specialists, et cetera. Um, we need more people to get involved, to get engaged. Um, um, Adrian Juarez asked for us to make sure that we provide more information um, about DLAC to get more parents engaged. We need parent involvement. Um, so we're just getting started, but we need everybody to be a part of that. We're doing our best. Um, Mr. Hernandez indicated that this is not easy work and I couldn't agree with him more. Um, I know our staff works really hard, puts a lot of passion into the work that they do. And I know that we recognize it, we appreciate it, but we still need a lot of help for our youth. And so I just encourage everybody um, to get involved in any way that you can, be a part of your local community school, direct people to applying for positions that we may have, but get involved because we need your help. Our students need your help, the community's help. Thank you. Thank you, Director Medina. Other board member reports, Director Flores. Uh, thank you, uh, President Manier. I just wanna take the opportunity to uh, welcome our students and staff to our new year. Um, and I, you know, this is gonna be very short and I just wanna say, uh, as I walked around, especially working in the, in the school myself, I, uh, I, I am reminded as to why I became an, an educator. Uh, seeing the, uh, the light, the smiles, the, uh, the, the ability to connect with our students is something that I will forever cherish. And this is something that I thank our educators do every single day. And I just, I just wanna let you know that we see you, we notice you, and we thank you for being here day in, day out. And um, here is to a new school year. Thank you, Director Flores. Any other board member reports? Okay, this brings us to item D6, CSBA report. Do we have a report this evening? Uh, I do not. I would report. Thank you. Thank you. This brings us to item E1. This is an action item approval of resolution for September Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. Um, the board will consider approval of resolution number 2023-2405, recognizing September Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. And I will hand it over to Stacey Desideri and Eric Lachi. Good evening, uh, members of the board and the Santa Rosa community. Um, thank you for giving us time tonight to talk to you about this topic. Um, I'm going to share a quick little slide deck. And there we go. So uh, again, I'm Stacy Desideri and with me tonight is Eric Lofchi and we are here talking to you tonight from the uh, Department of Wellness and Engagement about a very important topic, which is Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. Um, this is a sensitive subject and it's an important one that bears your time and attention because we know that suicide is a significant public health concern. And this is a leading cause of death for youth. And we know that it does hit some of our groups of students differently and more impactfully than others. But there is hope because when people do get help for suicidal ideation, things usually do get better. And together, we can make a difference. Community, we know, is a supportive factor in suicide prevention. So we are here tonight to ask you to adopt resolution 232405 which is to name September Suicide Awareness, uh, Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. So board policy AR 5141.52 requires staff training 
that focuses on prevention, intervention, and crisis response, or sometimes called postvention. Uh, it requires us to engage in developmentally appropriate student education. This year, we're going to be doing a gatekeeper training called Question, Persuade, and Refer that is supported in a partnership with the Sonoma County Office of Education in all of our ninth grades. We have uh, suicide uh, information, mental health uh, awareness in our health curricula. We focus on prevention and intervention specifically through all of our counseling departments system-wide, through our school-based therapist, our restorative, a restorative specialist, and also caring staff throughout. Uh, our community partnerships, we have a really, really powerful response and wanna thank our partners in, in, in the city and in response um, with the agencies that collaborate with them. And then also we have Umani Dodd Therapeutic Services at CCLA working in that regard. Um, so it, we just wanna make sure that whenever we talk about suicide, we talk about what folks can do when they're struggling. Uh, suicidal ideation is profoundly common and uh, there are really, really effective resources that folks can engage in. 988 is the new helpline. It, obviously, if you know someone in, a, in an immediate dangerous emergency, 911, um, there's the National Suicide Hotline. Uh, NAMI sponsors a text line. A lot of students want to receive some of their support on text. It's a little bit more private for them because they don't have to talk out loud, and that can be really effective. And then again, we're really building robust support systems at every single one of our campuses. We wanna encourage folks that are struggling to reach out to their counselor or another trusted adult at school. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any board member questions? Okay, I have, I have one quick question if that's okay. So um, I know that the Sonoma County Office of Education has a behavioral health department and they're working on rolling out a suicide prevention training for educators. Um, do we know how many of our educators are trained in suicide prevention if they've received like QPR certification or uh, mental health first aid certification? Don't have statistic exactly how many. I do know that we are regaining, we're, we're restarting uh, QPR at all of our grades this year. It's been done here and there. We we haven't done it consistently like this in a, in a couple of years. And, and I'm, I don't know exactly when we did that, but we are starting that again. And we're working with SCO to make sure that we build the capacity with them so that we can continue it within our own, with our own capacity. We have a three-year process with them. Uh, they do it. We're going to do it together the year after, and then we're going to do it with their support in the third year. And then we think by then we'll actually have the capacity to maintain it over time. Staff turnover, all those things cause issues with the continuation of these programs. And we're committed to continuing this, especially with the existence of the wellness and engagement department to make sure that that stuff is happening system-wide. Additionally, we know that every staff member, not just teachers, go through the annual mandated uh, trainings. And one of those repeated trainings is awareness of youth suicide, recognition of the warning signs, and ways to intervene. So whether they are a health or a ninth grade teacher who's engaging in the in-depth QPR, we can say with confidence that all of our staff have annual reminders and training about how they can be a resource for someone who's at risk. Thank you. Um, I saw Director Flores's hand and then Director Medina. Thank you for, for the report. And um, it, I, I know this is the, the beginning stages and, and I think um, we've mentioned this before that whenever we have a, a resolution like this one, we would like to see some, some sort of robust sort of data and um, what we're doing to engage and to do something instead of just being a performative sort of, you know, um, uh, resolution. And I, I thank you for being, uh, for making sure that, uh, that we talk about QPR training. Um, I know in, in some other districts that's been pretty effective. Uh, so the question I have for you is that now we use, uh, you know, Panorama, right, as, as a way to identify students. Uh, and uh, how are we using that program uh, to, to identify uh, students who may be at risk. So as we've mentioned before, Panorama is a um, 
confidential but not 100% anonymous survey. And so it does allow us to sort students and track students based on their um, responses to questions and the number of social emotional strengths they have. And we are following up with the groups of students that indicate the, the lowest amount of social emotional strength and making sure that we're asking them how things are going and, and, and getting a trusted adult in front of them. Additionally, there are some student free response sections. And whenever there is a very, very concerning or imminent uh, concerning like safety issue, we are able to um, break the confidentiality of the system based on the presenting safety needs. And we do that. Um, we most certainly have identified uh, students of concern and had to do suicide assessments uh, based on the results from the Panorama study. Another resource for students is the Stop It resource because um, Stop It, unlike Panorama, is completely anonymous. But one of the um, advantages to the Stop It resource is that if a student goes to their school's Stop It page and they don't feel like actually reaching out with a described tip about something that they're concerned about, one of the tabs is the Get Help resource. And on the Get Help page, every single school has identified the 988 helpline in addition to the National Suicide Hotline as one of the top two resources. And then includes a variety of other local community resources or national resources such as the Trevor Project, other resources that students can go to because sometimes they're ready to ask for help but they're ready to find that help in a more private way. Director Medina. Thank you, President Moniri. Um, I just wanted to follow, follow up with a few questions in, in terms of uh, very proactive measures to inform students about these services. Um, what are we doing? Um, what languages are any materials available in and is there going to be anything available at the back to school nights, given this is all September? Thank you. So right now, our site principals are starting to plan the kinds of activities that they are going to be doing during the month of September, which is why the timing of this is beautiful to coincide with the beginning of the September month, that being the same time that we are inviting our families to our campuses. And so each school is looking at their kind of unique culture and how they communicate but there's a variety of different ways to push this information out, both through Parent Square, directly to students through Student Square, broadcast through the Stop It Alert for kind of the grand big picture messaging. And then each school is planning on ways that they are going to communicate within their own community. How do we share these resources? Some schools are doing classroom visits uh, by the counselors or presentations uh, like through the health programs, but the communications are both global and unique to each campus. Any other questions? Okay, this is an action item, so we will move on to public comment. I have no blue card, so we will move on to remote attendees. Thank you, President Manieri. There are members of the public joining us on Zoom and would like to comment on item E1. Please raise your hand. Our first speaker is Adina Flores. As a reminder, it's a two minute time limit. <clears throat> Good evening, Board and Superintendent. I'd like to applaud Mr. Lofty and Ms. Desideri. I think they're great assets to the district and they put forth a lot of good work. So the district's lucky to have them. Uh, aside from that, I think we should look at the overall picture as to what is causing the increase in suicide and overall mental health issues. I can tangibly prove as an investigative reporter that people on this board, such as Ms. Dela Cruz, are making decisions at the board level that have nothing to do with natural disasters. Uh, these events are fabricated because people are washing money 
and we can nod our heads and no, 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 but you are under investigation with the state as of Ms. Money. Ms. Flores, your Bidet. commentary is not relevant to this board item. If you'd relevant. like to continue, please make it relevant. Yes, this, this is very relevant, um, but you can't decide the relevancy I'm getting to my point. Uh, when we talk about suicide rates going up, our students have been put on lockdown. They've been exposed to fires, but these events keep happening because they are prefabricated and people are profiting off of them. This is not in the best interest of our students. We're not addressing that at all. And I attend school board meetings across the state. So it's not just you guys. This is a pattern that is being replicated. So as somebody who wholeheartedly supports this district, I haven't worked for you all since last July when I was illegally forced out. So I would encourage us to look at what's truly causing suicide rates. This come, when, when it comes out of your mouth, it's fine to say that suicide rates are increased because of things such as lockdowns, which are coming again, and fires, and uh, just overall uneasiness of the students. But when I say it, I'm a conspiracy theorist, even though I can show it through financial. So we need to be better for our students. I don't know what the emotional outbursts were about earlier. Maybe understand equity and what these kids go through. Have any of you have ever been through domestic violence? Thank you, Ms. Flores. Our next speaker is Shelby Pryor. Good evening. Um, I must say thank you so much for giving that presentation on suicide prevention. I'm going to be honest. I had a friend of mine who killed himself, who served with me in the military. Um, he called me the day before it happened and said he really needed to see me. And then I found out on Facebook he shot and killed himself. Um, I don't think anybody here really knows what the signs are. We've only lived once. It doesn't matter what psychology you have or what things are going on in your life, like checking in on your people, making sure they're okay. You know, not just saying something to them on Facebook. These kids get information so quickly. And I want to see the data, which is not my style on how many students are actually participating and how we're trying to increase participation so that we can have these students under an umbrella of safety and networking and the ability to lean on each other when they do have differences. You see me as just some kind of brutish dude, but I do come with an actual response to not just complain, but kind of look for a solution. Because if you guys are the ones that are the problem, making decisions I don't like, I'm just trying to stay in the lane of what's in the best interest of these kids. I think suicide prevention, it starts with every single person sitting left and right of you, checking in, making sure each one of you guys are okay, and teaching our kids to do the same thing. I want to see every single person wake up, have a good day, do the things that they need to do, find an honest way to do them. I'm not saying people can't change, but it all starts with this mental illness stuff that we're talking about. Everybody wants something and doesn't have enough of something. Let's just be honest. Let's help them. Let's pass this and make it so it evolves Thank into you. something better. Thank you, Mr. Pryor. Our next speaker is Jessica Lightchow. I apologize if I'm not seeing your name correctly. Hi there, my name is Jess Lee Howe. You almost said it right. I'm a parent at the Santa Rosa Charter School for the Arts. I'm on the board here for the parent teacher organization. I also have a Santa Rosa High School freshman who is in our quest and in the general population as well. And I've been on a board um, on a parent teacher organization board for 14 years now um, at various levels, either elementary, middle, high school now. Um, and I just wanted to say that I think a big solution is getting more parents onto the campuses. Um, more bodies equals more support, more relief, more structure, more accountability, more help for the teachers. Um, and what we did today for Santa Rosa Charter School for the Arts was hold a mass volunteer requirement um, event where we had over 100 volunteers become uh, meet the requirements for the district requirements to become volunteers. So we just by holding a four hour event that the district came to, thank you so much for sending your technician to fingerprint for us. Um, we were able to 
uh, pass 100 volunteers into the school system. So I just, my recommendation is that you guys get this together for every single school that's in our district. If you can get more positive mentors and more parents to be able to pass these requirements, you're just handing uh, relief and positive and support to the students. Thank you. President Manieri, there are no other hands raised. Thank you. Uh, this comes back to the board for any further discussion or a motion, Trustee de la Cruz. Um, I just wanna say thank you to the last caller, Ms. Lijo, about how parents were able to organize that event. The volunteer application is a beast. And for somebody who is not English speaking or who isn't gonna necessarily navigate some of these things, um, easily, it's really hard. And so I just, I love that, that um, solution that uh, Charter School for the Art Parents came up with. And I'm wondering um, if there's a way that the district can, can do that or sponsor those kinds of events at, um, at school sites where, you know, we know that there's additional need for, for more bodies, more oversight, more, more loving folks in our, in our mix and on our, in our campuses. I'd like to respond. Um, to the question, yes, we wanted to try it out to see how well the system uh, would work with doing everything in one location, and it seems to be going really well. So yes, it is something that we definitely want to grow and are planning to do. Thank you so, so much. I think that's a great idea. I really appreciate it. Dr. Medina. I'd like to move to approve resolution number 2023-24-05 recognizing September as Suicide Prevention Month. Second. Thank you. Before we uh, call for a, roll, for, a, for a vote, is there any further discussion? Okay, that was moved by Director Medina and seconded by Director De La Cruz. Roll call vote, please. Director Rao. Aye. Director Medina. Aye. Director De La Cruz. Aye. Director McNally. Aye. Director Flores. Aye. Director De La Torre. Aye. President Manieri. Aye, thank you. This brings us to item E2. Oh, I have a, an, an error on my agenda. This brings us to item E2. Um, this is an action item. One moment. Thank you. My agenda froze. This is um, an action item, approval of resolution to recognize September as Attendance Awareness Month. The board will consider approval of resolution number 2023-2406, recognizing September as Attendance Awareness Month. I will hand this over to Mr. Mazzara. Thank you, uh, President Manieri, board members, and Superintendent Turnell. First of all, on behalf of Dr. Castro, uh, who was pulled away at the last minute, I'm presenting on behalf of his department. And uh, I wanna bring to your attention that uh, the board has been supporting attendance awareness resolution since 2013. It's been a very key part of our board's uh, emphasis on student attendance and the importance of it. Um, the goal uh, of this program is to mobilize uh, schools and communities to promote the value in attendance, to take concrete, concrete steps toward reducing chronic absenteeism. As you have already heard, uh, under the new reorganization and ed services, under the wellness and engagement department, sitting next to us. Um, the, edge, the, the new plan under the wellness and engagement department is to not just do the traditional factors of, of notifying parents and doing the letters that were required to by law, um, working up the MTSS chain to things like a SARB meeting, but you actually reach out and make personal contact with families to engage them in understanding the situations that may cause those uh, attendance issues to help support families, find resources, and or to try to get families potentially to different placements where they can be successful. And I think uh, that's part of the emphasis of the next of the new um, uh, uh, department and their emphasis on what they want to do differently. And with that, I, I would like to therefore be it resolved the Center of the City Schools stand with the nation in recognizing September as Attendance Awareness Month. We hereby commit to support improving school attendance and reducing chronic absenteeism to give all children an equitable opportunity to learn, grow, thrive academically, emotionally, and socially. And with that, I'll turn it back to the board. 
Thank you. Are there any board member questions? Director Flores. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, I like the, the fact that you, you talked about the um, MTSS you know, process and uh, that we're moving away from only doing SART or SART meetings. Um, is it possible next time when we have a resolution like this to have a, a short presentation as to what's working and what's not working in our district to see you know, what sort of things we can do to, to improve attendance issues? I mean, this is a chronic problem that has happened that is not just unique to Santa Rosa City Schools. I mean, we, we, we know that, right? We all read newspapers about that. But what can we do to improve that, right? And, and, and attached with this resolutions, right? Um, and, and even if the numbers are this small, right? Um, because then, then we can we can learn from that. Um, so um, that's just my. It's not really a question. It's just a, a little request, you know. So thank you. Thank you, Director Delatory. Thank you very much for the presentation. Um, I just really think it's uh, prudent to continue to shine light on why we have students missing days at school and making sure that we are taking the proper steps to attempt to identify those and provide them the help that's necessary. Um, unfortunately, we are all very aware of how stretched thin our resources are for mental health awareness. And when you consider anxiety, bullying, um, we just talked about suicide prevention month for the month of September. Um, there are a lot of issues going on and going through the hearts and minds of these children that they don't feel like school's a safe place to be. Unfortunately, many of these children, when they get to that frame of mind, don't have any safe place to be. So if we can become uh, better partners and better stewards of their mental health and ensure they have resources available, and we are taking a look and identifying why school's being missed, I think that'd be um, a really big piece to continuing to find a, a proper resolution. and. Um, if kids want to be at school, they're going to be there. And how can we make that a, a better environment for them uh, that speaks to them and helps them want to be on campus? Thank you, Director Trellatory. Just to reiterate that, uh, my lens of special education, uh, that obviously ties very well into absenteeism and, and, and the area that would be around anxiety and depression. Those become le the legal term is child find that we have to identify. Is there a, a potential disability? Um, and we are in a better place than ever uh, with the work that the board has asked us in Superintendent Turnell's direction around data gathering. And we have a new data system that's coming out that can really dial into just those nuances. We've already talked about panorama data and we, we kind of begin to put those things together. We are in a better place than we ever have been to really target not just you know students have a number of absences, but their sub demographics around it, their their program experiences, you know, 504 special education, EL status, that really help give a deeper story that allow us to dig further into that. I just think it's so important that we have those numbers and we utilize those numbers appropriate. Um, we don't just have them as a data point, but we're able to act on them. Um, so thank you for putting that work in. Other questions? Director Medina. I think um, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking to my own situation as a young student growing up. Um, not going to school was not really an option. I could be dying and no. The only way I could stay home is if they sent me back. And, and I think I've had the experience of seeing lots of parents that any little thing, they just let their kids stay. And I think it's to the detriment of the children. And, and I think identifying situations where it's not necessarily like an issue of the child, but maybe it's parenting. I, I, I wish we could do more. I don't know how we could do more, but I hope that's something that we could also look at because I feel that's an issue that exists out there because I've seen it. Um, and, and even though I might not have liked it as a student, I, I wish more people would have been like my mom. <laughs> I couldn't not go to school. And because because I know I benefited from it as being there was very important. And I know that it's so important to all of our students. I just kind of wanted to say that. Yeah. And, and thank you for saying that, because we know that oftentimes um, what we see in attendance is a symptom of 
some sort of rooted issue. And sometimes it is an issue that the child is carrying. Sometimes it's a challenge that the family is facing. And so um, I'd like to just share a couple of the ways that we are taking a look at attendance a little bit differently. Our work prioritizing partnership with our families, not just the students, didn't start on day one. This was something that our schools engaged in beginning last May, where every school identified a number of families that needed summer outreach. And our partnership with the Seneca pro program, Keeping Kids in School, our Seneca representatives spent the entire summer calling families, meeting with families, going and visiting and doing home visits, meeting students where they wanted to meet to talk with families about why is school important. And in addition to those kind of direct outreach from our schools identifying the families most at need, we also partnered with the city and participated in two community pop-ups and visited Caritas Village to meet families who may need additional support and we didn't go alone. We went, of course, with our Seneca partners, talking, having a wonderful time with children that they themselves were identifying how they are going to be agents of helping the family get to school. We've spent an incredible amount of time before the first day of school ever arrived. So we're hoping to see that bear fruit in our relationships with our students and the greater families as well. Superintendent. Thank you for sharing that, Stacy. Um, and I think it just goes to the heart of when we are serving human beings who have needs, it's important that we are connecting with them and making sure that our students know that they have connections on campus, people that they can go to for support, and that it isn't just a one-way street, um, but that we are reaching out as well. Um, it's not just waiting for families to tell us what's going on, but that when we see a pattern that we are stepping in to find out what's going on so that our students can be more open and communicate um, so that we can get them supports and services that they need. Other questions? Okay, at this time we will take public comment. I have no blue cards, so we will move on to our remote attendees. There are members of the public joining us on Zoom and would like to comment on item E2. This is uh, September Attendance Awareness Month. Um, the, there's a two minute timer and our first speaker is Adina, Adina Forrest. Good evening, board and superintendent. As we talk about attendance and the decline in attendance being that I am the former executive assistant, uh, that is an overall reflection of our enrollment rates because if kids are not going to school, we know that very well so in Vallejo, California, the enrollment is declining and that affects the funding and the staffing and everything across the board for the district. And because there are travesties of decisions being made at the board level, this is greatly affecting the attendance as somebody worked, who worked in the superintendent's office directly, I, as a government employee in my role, couldn't get a single answer from you guys or the county. How do the parents feel? Why are they pulling their children out of this district? Be it seems at this point in time that the board wants to take away parents' rights and give them to the state. This is saddening. I had a wonderful public education. That's why I am the person I am today. I can't say the same for our students. I can't imagine going through fires and distance learning and having to figure out 72 different genders. It's ridiculous at this point. These poor students, Miss Bowie, our former student board member was incredible. What a blessing. And so I hope that our students can have the opportunity to just have a standard education that they deserve. Thank you so much. Thank you. Our next speaker is Shelby Pryor. Good evening. Um, you know, I'd like to elaborate what this means um, in terms so that those who are listening and those who will listen get that the attendance is down in this 
protector because these schools can't offer safety to your children. Your children are feeling more suicidal in their in their care. And they're taking your money and driving you crazy, making you work hours and hours and hours so you can afford to live in spaces where you're not treated equal. The attendance for individuals right now, for their children, listening to what you guys want to put hand in hand, it's Suicide Prevention Month and it's Attendance Month. Why would I put my child in charge or allow you to have charge of my child when my child is with me, they're not feeling suicidal. They have a place where they're safe and they're nurtured from a space that only a parent can understand. Parents, translation, you want to defund these people and get them out of your children's lives? Unenroll your children from this system and start teaching your children the things that have value. Because all that paper chasing that they're doing has nothing to do with being a wholesome person. Attendance is going to have to change so that these people get defunded out of your life and you get your children back. Let's go ahead and talk about attendance. It is Attendance Awareness Month. Let our side speak. I guarantee there's more of us than y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Margaret Boone. Good evening. I just wanted to call in um, because in high school, I had the worst attendance. I was absent two to three days a week, every week. Um, I had a lot of anxiety. I had selective mutism. I just did not want to go. And there was nothing anyone in my family could do to make me go to school. Um, but I do think it would have helped if someone at school had asked me, why are you not coming to school? And nobody ever did that. <laughs> and so I, I want to support this um, and everything that we can do to get these kids to school. I think dealing with the mental health issues, I had anxiety, I had depression, I had insomnia. Um, and so I would just not go. And um, thank God I graduated because I have ADHD. But <laughs> aside from that, it was just, you know, if you are having those kinds of feelings, it's really hard to get out of bed at seven o'clock in the morning and get on a bus or walk to school or do anything else like that. It's just overwhelming. And then you miss a day. And at one point I missed two straight weeks of school. And I was so overwhelmed with the thought of how much work I had missed. It took everything in me to go back. And so I just think it's, it's a lot bigger problem than, than necessarily people realize, but the mental health supports are really the key to overcoming the attendance issues. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. <clears throat> Our next speaker is Carmen Molina. Hi, um, I'm a teacher for Santa Rosa City Schools and I have seen it's like a pendulum. When I first started 10 years ago, the attendance was high and we've had fires, we've had a pandemic. There's a number of things that have caused mental health issues. Um, we have social media, we have all kinds of platforms that are impacting our children. And it's hard to put the finger on the school district or the parents or this or that. There's a number of reasons why our kids are impacted. And I really appreciate what Margaret just said about all these other issues that our kids have that are developing more and we're seeing it more and more ADHD, mental health, anxiety, all of these things and we are bringing it to light and we can only work as quickly as we can as we're starting to understand these situations. But I appreciate that our school is taking action. We are giving truancies for tardies. We are contacting families and we are doing everything we can to try to catch up with this problem. And I just want to acknowledge that we are we are working as hard as we can and we are trying to solve the problem. And this is a problem and we will try our best to resolve it. But parents, let's work together. Teachers, board, let's work together because 
the end result is that we want to be there for our students, we want to help with their mental health, and we want our kids in school and engaged. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Molina. Our next speaker is Jessica Lightchow. Hi there, I just wanted to play off. I didn't plan on speaking again, but listening to the feedback from the public comments, I think that it's important to say again at every board meeting, you guys need more people. And if it's not paid people, it's volunteers. So if you can to get more volunteers and more parents back onto your campus, I think that schools that really work to create a community within their school, they have good, better enrollments. Um, and I would venture to assume that the parents that are not involved in the school, those are probably more likely to be the kids that have the attendance problems. So if we bring our parents back into the school and we create a community and we create a place that everyone is coming back together, maybe like it was five and 10 years ago before COVID, I think that you'll naturally see an attendance improve. We were just having conversations last year at the elementary and middle school level that um, attendance was down and we were trying, or enrollment in general was down. And we were trying to come up with ways how to market ourselves, how to do this or how to do that. And what we did was we created a community um, and now we have a wait list again. So I just think it's really important to get the parents back into the school. Um, teachers can't do everything. And in doing so, the kids will have more of a sense of community. And I think that you'll see a positive change just by literally simply bringing more bodies in. Thank you, Jessica. Our next speaker is Karen Wagner. Hi, good evening, everyone. So um, what I wanted to say is that it does take a village um, to get to the root of some of these things. So we noticed we had a student that was absent for the last three days. Um, however, that student was calling other students in our classroom. And so I caught on to that. Um, we called home. Um, Mom says the bus isn't picking up. Well, we checked with the bus driver bus driver's picking up, but student isn't going out. So long, you know, story short is that we have, you know, child telling mom something, mom telling us something. And so now we're, I mean, thanks to our, um, our coworker who is bilingual, she was able to, um, you know, relay the, the important message back to the parent. So now we're getting to the root of what's really going on. And it really does take a, um, you know, a focus and a lens um, to look on this. And, um, you know, maybe it's a different seating chart. Maybe it's, you know, some other things that are going on. So um, she loves school, but she was just playing a game. Um, so we're, we're on it. Um, we do have another student that has been out and we checked on them. Um, and they were actually sick with a medical. So we are paying attention, just letting you guys know. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. President Manieri, there are no more hands raised. Thank you. Uh, this comes back to the board for any further discussion or a motion. Um, Trustee Medina. It's not a, another comment. Um, in listening to everybody, I, I was reminded about a person that I think was played a very significant role in our district, which was Eugene Mihadis, a truant officer. Um, one of the reasons why students aren't in schools oftentimes is because they simply cut, especially, you know, in teenage years, they're all out there. He used to go out to the places where you'd commonly find them and bring them back to school. Um, we obviously don't have that position now, but as we look at expanding our work with community partner organizations, you know, I think it'd be good to kind of explore how can we maybe create some sort of a network of that or maybe some sort of semi-truant officer type of thing where people are out there observing the community, say, hey, well, your kids are here. How can we get them back at school? Something that really finds them and gets them back in. Because um, I remember he would always have a great relationship with kids. You know, he'd find them. They're like, ah, okay, you got us. Go back to school. 
and they would benefit from that. But I think that's something that we need to like also add to the repertoire of things that we do and working with our community partners, I think is a great opportunity to expand on. Thank you. Thank you. Other comments or a motion? I'd like to move to approve the resolution to recognize September as Attendance Awareness Month. Second. Second. Thank you. That was moved by Director De La Cruz and seconded by Director Flores. Roll call vote, please. Director Rao. Aye. Director De La Cruz. Aye. Director Flores. Aye. Director McNally. Aye. Director Medina. Aye. Director De La Torre. Aye. President Manieri. Aye. Thank you. This brings us to item E3, action item, approval of provisional internship permit application, also known as a PIP or PIP for Riley Burke. Um, and presenting this item is Dr. Vicki Zanz. Thank you, President Manieri, Superintendent Trinnell, members of the board and members of the San Rosa City Schools community. I am here today to ask for you to approve the provisional internship permit for Riley Burke, a special day class, educational specialist at Steel Lane Elementary School. Thank you. Are there any board member questions? Seeing none, we'll move on to public comment. I have no blue card, so we'll move on to remote attendees. There are members of the public joining us on Zoom and would like to comment on item E3. Please raise your hand. President Manieri, there are no hands raised. Thank you. This comes back to the board for further discussion or a motion. I'd like to move to approve the PIP for Riley Burke. Second. Thank you. That was moved by Director De La Cruz and seconded by Director Medina. Roll call vote, please. Director Rao. Aye. Director De La Cruz. Aye. Director Medina. Aye. Director McNally. Aye. Director Flores. Aye. Director De La Torre. Aye. President Manieri. Aye. We are at our consent items. Um, I have noted that item F4 has been pulled by Director Medina and item F9 has been pulled by Superintendent Trinnell. Um, we'll also ask if there are any members of the public who would like to give public comment on our consent items at this time. If there are members of the public joining us on Zoom and would like to comment on items F, these are our consent agenda items, please raise your hand. There are no hands raised. Thank you. Uh, first, we need a motion for items F1 through three, five through eight, and 10 through 20. So moved. Second. Thank you. That was moved by Director Medina, seconded by Director Flores. Roll call vote, please. Director Rao. Aye. Director Medina. Aye. Director Flores. Aye. Director De La Cruz. Aye. Director McNally. Aye. Director De La Torre. Aye. President Manieri. Aye. Thank you. This brings us to item F4. I'll hand it over to uh, Director Medina. Thank you. So my question is in regards to the contract for, um, uh, let's see, the Acosta uh, Latino Educational Partnership. Um, Superintendent Trinal, you had mentioned something about a collaborative with go around something with this. And I, I was wondering if this was a part of that, is it separate from that um, as it relates to ethnic studies implementation? And um, how are we doing with that? I'm actually going to ask that we invite Tim Zolinardo and Samuel Martinez, who are both online, who can speak to this piece. Thank you. Good evening, Superintendent Trunell, President Manieri, members of the board, thank you for having me here. Just making sure everything's loaded up on Zoom and I can see all of you, so thanks for your patience. Hope you're all doing well. So uh, thank you for the question, uh, Mr. Medina, I appreciate it. So uh, Sonoma County Office of Education is doing a 
uh, collective. I'm looking at doing a collective collaborative, but it's among district uh, office administrators. The uh, addendum for this contract was actually something that we were really excited to work on this year. We were looking at trying to, before now, um, approve the full contract, but it was delayed to make sure we could do it. This is a specific focus for Santa Rosa City Schools employees to intentionally work with just our administrators on moving through classrooms and debriefing observations about what we see in between practice, theory, and our course descriptions to make sure as we scale up that quality is maintained. And so we're very happy to uh, bring this forward as an opportunity to deepen our uh, practices. And I'd like to say just as a shout out, our uh, work with the Acosta Educational Partnership, we've actually already almost filled all of our teacher slots for this year, um, which went that message just went out this week this is like just the second week of school almost all of the slots are open for teachers are full but this is specifically focused on administrators and observing practice and having a chance to debrief how they can support their teachers in deeper implementation and support i think my my only other question in relation to that collab with the county will there be something for them that comes to us or would that be something that's go with pay them or are they doing it separately? Because I believe you mentioned they were going to be involved. So what um, Trustee Medina is referring to is a different project that is still in development um, that will include additional districts and will be funded through SCO. Thank you. Thank you for asking. I appreciate the opportunity to explain that. Thank you. Other questions, Director Medina? I'll just move to approve item F4. I think I, I sorry, go ahead. Second. Thank you. Um, well, well, for consistency, we'll just ask if um, there is anyone who would like to give public comment on item F4. If there are members of the public joining us on Zoom and would like to comment on item F4, please raise your hand. There are no hands raised. Thank you. That was moved by Director Medina, seconded by Director De La Cruz. Roll call vote, please. Director Rao. Aye. Director Medina. Aye. Director De La Cruz. Aye. Director McNally. Aye. Director Flores. Aye. Director De La Torre. Aye. President Manieri. Aye. Thank you. Item F9, approval of STEM teacher residency implementation grant MOU. I'll hand it over to Superintendent Trinnell. Thank you so much. Um, we. I pulled this item because I wanted to be sure that there was clarity around the documents that the board was actually being asked to approve. Um, this is a partnership where we are a holder um, of a grant in partnership with Petaluma City Schools. Uh, I'm gonna invite Tim Zolinardo and Samuel Martinez to continue um, to share information about this. But the one thing that I wanted to point out as I'm pulling up the item is that the, um, the document titled <laughs> residency agreement uh, in the board agenda is actually what we're asking you to focus on tonight as far as a contract. We've had this grant for some time and you can see in the older documents that there are names associated who are no longer a part of our district. But remember that the district is the holder of the grant, not the people who are named in the document. And I will hand it over um, to our colleagues to share additional information about that. Great. Thank you. Good evening once again, uh, Superintendent Trunel, uh, President Manier, and members of the board. Thank you very much for asking us to clarify any questions you have. Um, before I welcome those, just let me say that we are very excited to work on residency programs with our local university and local districts. It is one of the ways in which we, Santa Rosa City Schools, are working to uh, kind of end around the, the teacher shortage that's occurring, especially in areas such as um, science, technology, engineering, and math, and with bilingual educators. And this is one of those. So any questions that you have, we're happy to answer. And I know that um, Samuel Martinez will be happy to go into specifics, but please know that all of these partnerships are with Sonoma State and Dr. Almino is here uh, this evening as one of our um, awardees. And these are very important relationships as a way that we're gonna make sure that we continue to bring in quality educators to our profession to impact and benefit our students. But please let me know what questions you have and we'll be happy to answer. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Zalonardo. Are there any board member questions? Director Flores. Could you just briefly explain um, how a, a person may end up 
earning one of these grants, uh, is it through a PIP or um, any other way? Uh, just briefly explain that because it's, it's a bit confusing. Thank you. Yeah, I'll turn that over to uh, so, Samuel Martinez. We'll be happy to explain some of the details. Thank you. So is it's there are there is a been a statewide initiative uh, that CTC has uh, invested strongly in in developing high quality teachers. Uh, what what you find what they found is uh, in studying Linda Darling Hammond and studying other countries models that support high quality development of teachers include deep investment in practice strong mentorship, partnerships between districts and universities, and that's what this is. So the, the CTC has granted us, it's a, it's a grant now, we're entering the second phase of three years. We just sunsetted three years of a STEM uh, residency grant where Napa was the lead LEA. We are now the lead LEA for this STEM implementation grant, and they're uh, providing us along with Sonoma State University and Petaluma City Schools with over $400,000 a year to help uh, grow our own teachers. And so the, it, the, the process begins um, in February, March, where we begin recruiting teachers to enter Sonoma State University as residents. And then we pair them up and select mentors across our system. And then we begin the process of training them uh, through the summer and throughout the year in partnership with mentor teachers in our system. So they're partnered. Uh, they do uh, extensive amounts of hours in our classrooms in partnership with these mentor teachers. And then they commit to working with us for four years. Uh, we have currently a partnership that's that's not in this grant that will be coming up with an MOU uh, in pro possibly the next board meeting uh, with Napa for bilingual teachers. Uh, this particular grant is speaking specifically for math and science teachers, which is one of one er one area of greatest need. And so this is a positive way for us to really grow our own, train our own consistent with our priorities, our MVPs, uh, what it is that we want for Santa Rosa City Schools, and cast a wide net to bring in diverse teachers for our students. And, and then also have um, really the ability to bring in these high quality teachers into our schools. Um, and, and the emphasis is in our schools serving uh, the majority of our unduplicated count students. And so it really is a positive way for us to solve uh, some of the teacher shortage problems, but also uh, positively uh, have stronger impact on teachers in partnership uh, with residents and our Sonoma State University um, colleagues. And in the case of this grant, there's a partnership with Petaluma City Schools as well. Okay, so I have a follow-up question. Um, so you, you mentioned that teachers are placed um, in these um, positions, right, for, for about four years. Um, could you explain how that works? And um, do they so no, get, hold on a second, do they get to pick uh, the uh, placement and are they first on the list to pick? What if we don't, if we don't have a position available, what happens then? Is it, is the um, uh, MOU non and void? Um, how do we make sure that we have um, those positions available for, for these folks? Uh, do we do a preempted sort of uh, delineation of what sort of positions we have available when we do this ahead of time to ensure that they have a place once they're done with the residency or, or I, I'm, I'm a little bit confused as to how yeah. that. Yeah, so, so if we do not have a place for them, then they are welcome to apply in other districts. So in the case, for instance, of our last grant, uh, two of our science uh, residents were hired by Petaluma City Schools. Um, okay, and so, Okay, so hold on a second. Yeah. So you, it's, you're telling me that we lost two science teachers to another yep. district. Yep. Okay, can, can you explain how, okay, so I'm. So it has to do with whether or not we have vacancies for them. And, um, and in that case, we didn't have uh, sufficient vacancies for them, so they are welcome to apply elsewhere. These are positions of high need, 
And so um, they are contracted elsewhere um, with great facility. There's no, um, it, it's not difficult for them to get employment elsewhere. No, I, I see that. But my question is, do we do a preliminary sort of assessment of yep. what positions do we have available ahead of time to make sure that we don't lose these folks? Yep. Um, I mean, I'm because gonna... losing two science teachers to me, that's, yeah. that's, that's huge. So with science in particular, what happens is there are specific science credentials. So unlike math or English or social studies where you have a math credential and you can teach any math class or a social studies credential, you can teach any social studies class. With science, it is subject specific. And it so happens that we did not have any vacancies in the life sciences. And these residents were biological science majors. So we were not able to hire them because we did not have the positions. We do have um, physical science vacancies, but we did not have any biological science vacancies. This goes back to my question. Do we do a pre-assessment to, to ensure that we have those positions aligned by the time they finish the, the uh, residency program? That is my question. So Look. part of the process is us projecting with our staff, whether they're staying with us or whether they're resigning or moving somewhere else. And what we're experiencing is that we are getting confirmations that individuals are with us. And then if they happen to not be with us, we're getting late resignations where these individuals have already taken positions elsewhere. So I get it, life happens, right? Uh, as, a, as, a, as a board member, I would like to see a systemic sort of way to ensure that these folks that we're spending, you know, that we're investing quite a bit of time and resources are able to find a place within San Jose City Schools. Okay, so, I mean, that is my, my goal, right? Um, to, to, to make sure that our students are taught by licensed credential instructors, especially those that we, uh, um, to whom we invested quite a bit of, of resources, especially in the residency program. So, um, when I hear that we lose teachers, as you know, you know, biological sciences, that I mean, that could be AP Bio, AP Environmental Science, our, our Ag, well, that's different, I'm sorry, our, you know, um, life science courses, biology and all that. I mean, it's just, to me, that's, that's, that's a, re a big red flag that we're losing folks. Uh, and then what I'm hearing at the ground level is that we don't have enough teachers to teach certain classes, right? So proactively making sure that we we have places for for these folks so hopefully by our next cycle you know we we won't lose any of our folks and the other issue that i heard is that our process sometimes takes too long to ensure that our folks are able to get a job within our our school district so what are we doing to mitigate that we do projections for the coming school year mid-year um, because we have a lot to consider when it comes to our full-time positions, part-time, et cetera. And we also have to start staffing allocations for our school sites. So we do that around the same time that we're working on this grant as well. But we need all of our people at our school sites to be our partners and communicate with us sooner if they have other plans so that we can make these uh, positions available to these individuals. We cannot create additional positions just to keep people within our system when we don't have classrooms for them. So it is a cycle and it does require us to work together and we will continue to work on strengthening our hiring process so that we can um, capture people and keep them with us sooner than some of our processes have been. May I add one thing, Superintendent Trunell? Is it okay if I add one thing? Yeah go, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. thank you, Mr. Flores, for all your questions. I think our first intent is exactly as was expressed by you and Superintendent Trunell to hold on to all of these. But we also are in a partnership with uh, Sonoma State University. As we expressed tonight, that partnership is a community partnership. We know there might be an occasional teacher or two that we spend a lot of time with, that we prepare, who may end up in a different district. But we also believe those neighboring districts 
if we do not have the position, are endeavoring to support our community as well and making for a stronger educational experience. So we know that's part of it, and we're willing to take the time and the effort. And Mr. Martinez is willing to put in the energy to keep these things moving and to work with our teachers, even if we don't get 100% of them, but we get 90%. So thank you. Are there any other questions? Okay, we will take public comment on item F9. I have one blue card from Catherine Howell. Hi, good evening again. I guess I need to start by saying thank you to Director Flores for asking those questions because a lot of them were things that I was going to bring up. Um, so I will limit myself to bringing up something that wasn't brought up in the fact that when we have limited our student teachers, our residents to um, CCLA, Comstock, those schools are very small. Uh, there's only three science teachers at CCLA. I believe there are only three at Comstock. <laughs> and what this has done over the past few years is put a huge burden on those science teachers to be mentors. Um, can we spread the love? Can we spread the students teachers out? And perhaps if they're at a high school that is potentially got openings that, you know, they get to know the department, they get to know the other teachers they may be working with. And there is a possibility that they could actually be placed at the school that they have student taught, uh, which at this point in the middle school level is pretty impossible. Uh, at CCLA this year, with their three science teachers and their two residents, they are both being mentored by the same science teacher because one of the CCLA teachers, science teachers is leaving the district and the other one has too many other commitments to agree to be a mentor. So it's a tough situation when we've chosen our two smallest middle schools to be the location of these residents. It really limits that and puts a huge burden on our teachers um, who, by the way, are still only getting $1,500 for countless numbers of hours put into these teachers, these new student teachers. We highly support the program, but we definitely think that it's got some problems and it needs to be examined and realigned so that it is better for everybody. Thank you. Thank you, President Howell. Um, at this time, we'll move on to remote attendees, if we have any. If there are members of the public joining us on Zoom and would like to comment on item F9, please raise your hand. President Manieri, there are no hands raised. Thank you. This comes back to the board for um, a motion, please. Move to approve the STEM teacher residency implementation grant MOU. Second. Thank you, that was moved by Director Medina, seconded by Director De La Cruz. Roll call vote, please. Director Rao. Aye. Director Medina. Aye. Director De La Cruz. Aye. Director McNally. Aye. Director Flores. Aye. Director De La Torre. Aye. President Manieri. Aye. Thank you, this brings us to item G1, approval of minutes of the regular board meeting held on August 9th, 2023, seeking a motion for approval. I'd like to move to approve. Second. Thank you, that was moved by Director De La Cruz, and seconded by Director Medina. Roll call vote, please. Director Rao. Aye. Director De La Cruz. Aye. Director Medina. Aye. Director McNally. Aye. Director Flores. Aye. Director De La Torre. Aye. President Manieri. Aye. Next are board member requests for information. Are there any requests this evening? Director Medina, and then Director De La Torre, and then Director De La Cruz. Um, two things. Uh, first, I'm wondering if we could get some sort of data just on the amount of usage last last year um, on the Stop It app in terms of how many requests, how much, and follow up and such, whatever we could get in terms of information on usage of that app. And um, secondly, maybe uh, a presentation or something about the map test and and kind of what we get from it, how it benefits um, how much time and resources are used to do it and the possibility of uh, alternative options to accomplish the same thing if needed. Thank you, Director De La Torre. I'd like to know if we can get some uh, numbers since the next board meeting will be uh, you know, 
four months into the school year. The additional positions that we approved to be added uh, as resources for the certificate and classified, um, how are we doing on the field in those positions and ensuring that our campuses are supported? Um, I know it was a great um, idea to offer more positions, but if we can't get them filled, um, that might hurt some of our campus. So if we just get some, uh, get a look on that, that'd be great. Thank you, Director de la Cruz. My question was about the map test. I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. Any other requests this evening? Okay, this brings us to our information items. For the evening listed in the agenda packet, we have future board discussion items, board conduct and code of ethics, educational acronyms and abbreviations, and facilities projects update. Before we adjourn, Superintendent Trinnell, any last announcements? Thank you everyone for being here and let's continue to be passionate and uh, care for our students in a way that they can see and they can feel uh, so that they can feel that they belong and that they can be open to us so we can do everything we can for them. Thank you. Meeting adjourned.